Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another mod review with me, Simulation for the Nation. Uh, this is one where I am behind the uh, behind the times with this by a few days, but it is still worth looking into just for the simple sheer beauty of what they have created. Uh, I'm, of course, talking about North Modern Company. Now, a company who are, before this week, predominantly known within the FS world, at least for creating uh, some really, really fantastically detailed forestry equipment, if you haven't downloaded that already, and that is your thing, make sure you head on over to the Mod Hub and find all of that. Uh, and then they blew us away with this uh, throwback, really, to FS11, FS13, I do believe, uh, where this was originally NI Modern and their collection of grey Fergies. And they've really excelled themselves by bringing those kicking and screaming into FS19. And yeah, quite frankly, it's stunning. Really, really impressive. Uh, the range, the pack is huge. Uh, inside the pack there, it features uh, three different tractors, the TEA-20 Tandem, the, uh, the half track, and the uh, standard. Now the standard is what we have in front of us right about here, uh, which just looks incredible. I'm gonna, we're going to have a bit of a look at um, the, uh, uh, the tractors and the equipment in general, really. Just an overview of my favourite pieces. Um, I was never a big fan of the half track and never really used that too much. Uh, I wanted to keep it quite simple here. Of course, if you want to download those and have a play, by all means, they are really impressive and it's a great kit to, to be able to do that with but this is the this is the, the these are the models that really do it for me um so yeah let's start with the basics let's start with where it all began this is the te20 and what a beautifully simple but thoroughbred of a machine this is uh a great tractor uh, renowned in the um in the early generation of the uh of the mechanical farm, at least for being an absolute workhorse. This is one of the first most reliable tractors that uh, I was ever told about when I was when I was uh, learning uh, way back when. Um, and there, uh, it's just an incredible, incredible piece of equipment here. Uh, and so I really wanted to just kind of pay a little bit of attention just to show you what this looked like. Bear in mind, this is 1946, really, 1946 and onwards that we, we saw these arrive. And uh, just beautiful. If I go into the first person view, let's have a look at the cab here. Um, when I start up this engine, you'll see. Look at the movement here of the steering column as everything drive moves around there. And then as I start to drive, you'll see that my pedals start to move there. And my gears are changing as well, which is just quite simply stunning. If I turn off the engine, I can just stop as well. Just really, really nice. I'm going to start this one up though. So we can have a look around at the engine as it is kicking over. You'll see that the uh, we have our fan turn in there. Not a lot of detail around the engines then, but then they were very simple, uh, very simple uh, blocks anyway. So uh, we've got a great range of equipment as well. As you can see, we've got a nice little trailer. This can be configured to have a just a flat trailer, or with uh, I think this is about three ton capacity. Uh, and then you can also change it if you so desire to have the old banana loader on the back. Uh, I say on the back there because it is a front loader, but it is mounted kind of over the rear axle there, where you got the um, most uh, capability to mount a loader, but also allowed you to uh, get the most stability, really. Just, I love these loaders. Just take a look at how weird that must be sitting in there when you're in first person view and you're using your loader there. That just looks weird to me, but hey, that's how that's how we first started. That's how it worked. And uh, yeah, a beautiful looking loader. Uh, I just love, love, love the detail. We have, of course, got the weight block on the back here, so when you are using that hefty loader there, uh, you've got plenty of uh, weight on the rear end as well. Uh, as you look around, the details just look really, really nice. Uh, what I am going to do with this one in particular here, let's get a bit of dirt thrown onto here, shall we? So we're going to go dip, and we'll go one. And there we are. Look at the wheels. That looks pretty good. I like that an awful lot. Um, and then, yeah, so that is another fantastic, fantastic looking, uh, looking model. Just don't see it very often, do you? And I think it's a shame, but man, that's good. That is good. It just gives you a real idea of how simply things were designed and made at first, and then how the evolution of that moving forward. Uh, and then, speaking of evolution, we're gonna go around here. I think. Yeah, let's try this one. Speaking of evolution, here we are. Brings us on to the tandem now. When you got into the fields, you had bigger equipment, you needed more power, you needed four-wheel drive. And what better way to try and design and develop four-wheel drive to begin with than just stick one two-wheel drive tractor on the front end of another one. Um, this is essentially your first quad track, your first articulated tractor. This is the first notion, the first design of it, and what a design. Um, 
what I, what I love about this. Like, just, if I shine a bit of light in here, look at the mechanism that's all been so detailed, uh, so carefully detailed. How they've designed this and made this is just incredible. So, you have here your mechanisms which are driven by those levers on the, the main unit uh, to allow you to change gear, uh, to dip the clutch in when you need to, and to be able to uh, function with the... Uh, with the four-wheel drive aspect of the front end there, which is just incredible, really. I find that just so stunning. Uh, put the 5 4 plow on the back of it, uh, and if we jump into here, let's just have a look in as we get close up to this front end there. As you turn, everything starts to move. We'll start this one up. We've got two engines firing, two exhausts. The exhausts are a little bit low and you also point inward, so if you're driving along there, you're gonna get a face full of fumes. Uh, but, as we go forward, hey, look at the levers are moving now. So the lever on the gear stick over here is moving, but then you can see that's being controlled by these levers here. And then they are all changing there, which is just incredible. I'm sorry, but I absolutely think that's amazing. So much detail in that. Uh, and again, the textures look very, very nice. It's not like a, a cheaply or roughly converted pack there. It just looks incredible. Very, very impressive amount of work. The plow in the back here starts life as a 3 4. You can have it as a 4 or a 5 as well. Um, with a little bit of a. We do that. And we bring in the wear as well, uh, so you can see there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of wear on the uh, the grey is no longer grey. It's kind of been stripped off there, but the plow looks pretty good. The plow looks worn down, which is nice. But yeah, again, just so much detail. The level of time and effort this must have taken is truly very impressive. Then it's a huge testament to the guys who've been working on this over at uh, North Modern Company. So a big shout out to them. Make sure you go and find them on Facebook. Give them a follow and a like because that was very impressive. I just want to tip up the screen trailer as well. See what that looks like. Not quite the same as the last review we did with the Red Rocks there, but you can see it is. This is the great grandfather to that trailer. So I'm sure you'll agree there. Very impressive nonetheless. Very simple design, but it worked really. That's all you can say. And it's. Uh, Not all that bad, I don't, uh, I do not believe. Like I say, uh, we're gonna go into the store now anyway and just have a look at what else. Best way to do is to go via brand, go to the Ferguson pack. We'll look at that half track. This is again, an interesting, interesting design. The configurations available are incredible. This is across the board. So you can see the, prelim the, the preliminary features here are the very same as like a standard T20. Uh, across the board with your, um, with your TEs, you can change the pickup hitch on the back there. We have your standard kind of pickup hitch. You can change that to a swing drawbar as well. Uh, when you do want to, this changes to a regular three-point hitch. This this is removed and added in is just a regular ball hitch there as well. Uh, you can change the config configurations on the side to be Ferguson or nothing at all. And then now this is allows you to right here, for example, there's no foot plate at the moment, which I always found weird because that kind of meant your foot would be almost riding the uh, clutch. So you had this lever, this little foot rest here, but you can add on like the, the foot plate or you can take it away as well, which I think is very nice. Uh, put that out there. And then you can also get it with like a, with, with snow skis of all things, which is just incredible. I love that idea. Where's that configuration gone? Half tracks there. There you go. Skis on the front because why not? Just think, just nuts, absolutely nuts. But yeah, and that's it. Cost-wise, three thousand uh, pounds. So if you ever want to get one of these on your farm, there, it's not going to be a big stretch whatsoever. And I like that a lot. Really, really nice. Some great little bits of equipment to go with it as well. You got a saw bench, you've got a log grab as well, and then you got a two furrow plow or even a single furrow plow, which is a nice little touch uh, as well. These were quite often used on the back of a Fergie for your plowing matches and championships. Probably still are in many places as well because we're a nice, reliable, straight shooting little plow there. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so, really, just I cannot get over how impressive these are. Uh, I saw these arrive there and was unfortunately just not able to get any uh, review done soon enough, but yeah. Very, very impressive indeed. And yeah, I'm gonna leave them right here and let them bask in the sunshine. So we'll see you later after the, uh, after this. We're gonna have another couple of mod reviews coming up of some mods that I found recently that really are ticking a good box. 
Uh, some of the mods that I'm impressed with are the the, the start of the, um, the the placeables that are emerging, some British style shed placeables as well, which is great to see, uh, that you can see all around here, so watch the space for those. Until next time though, we'll leave it here, so thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, I've been Simulation for the Nation, don't forget to hit the like button, smash that subscribe button, and we'll see you all in the next one. Catch you later.